Pillsbury, uh, yeah, bust the Pillsbury Doughboy biscuit can. I'll be at a bottom shelf Becky. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I, I, I knew, I knew what was. I knew at that point, I knew it was on. It was on. See, y'all looking at the fact that, y'all looking at the fact that, oh, this was just some routine traffic stop gone horribly wrong. Because apparently he was excessively speeding. No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. That ain't got nothing to do with why they did this dude the way they did him. That ain't got nothing to do with it. They did Tyreek they they did Tyree Nichols like that. Because he was making nice with his girl. He was bumping he basically he was bumping uglies with his girl. That's why they did him like that. Now the reason why I say this needed to happen as terrible of a thing as that is to say is because there's so many people in Memphis who are from Memphis who are dying because of that culture down there and maybe it's horrible of a thing like I said as this is to say maybe it took someone from outside of Memphis but who lived in Memphis and didn't survive Memphis as a result died in Memphis to expose Memphis to the end not only the country but the whole world so I don't so when I say that this kind of low-key needed to have I don't say like this is a good thing No, it's definitely a bad thing, but it's a bad thing that that if it didn't happen, it would have never been exposed. Because, you know, the thing and, you know, the thing about it is and here's the thing that angers me so much, too, when I think about this shit. I have been warning, I have been on YouTube at least since 2015, exposing this city. So don't get it twisted. Just because I had to start a whole new platform and I basically erased a lot of my videos because I was always getting community strikes for them. Because people can't stand the truth. People can't handle the truth. And I was warning the masses about that city. I was telling you, I mean, it may have, it may not have been the best, uh, it may have not have been the best format or had the best editing, but the thing about it is I was telling the masses about that city. I was warning people about that city <sighs> because I was in the thick of it. Who wouldn't be frustrated? Who wouldn't be frustrated having graduated college from there and even after all that, you still can't find work. Yeah, I'm gonna, anyone is gonna be a little flustered about that. And you still have to go through the notions of Memphis. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have a huge fucking problem with that. I most certainly will. I'm gonna have a problem with that. Not to mention braving the dangers of that city. Like I said, the traffic, the goons, the the hoes, the and you know the fucked up thing about it is is that you know 
Young Dolph knew what it was. The Gangsta Boo know, knew what it was. Because they're what I consider natives. Even though uh, Young Dolph wasn't born in Memphis. I, hell, I wasn't born in Memphis. But we lived there our whole lives. So we knew what it was. They knew what it was. They they knew they was gambling with their life when they came back there. But see, the thing is, Tyree Nichols didn't. I can tell just by his demeanor. He, he didn't know what he was dealing with. He didn't know what he was fooling with. Even though, yeah, he lived there for a considerable amount of time. From what I hear, he they said he lived there for like 14, 15 years. But, you know, from what I gather about, you know, the kind of lifestyle that he lived, he was pretty much, he was pretty much what the community would refer to as a cornball. Like, this dude skated and, um, you see, like I said, coming from Memphis when I was living, like, shit, I don't even recall a skateboarding but like I said, it's been five years since I lived there, so you know, needless to say, things probably have changed, and I'm pretty sure, you know, liberalism probably has made some sort of impact on the city. Not that it's changed the nature of that city. You'll never change that. Memphis already has an established culture, and it and it was long established, long before long before you and I were even set foot in that city. Long before, long before you and I were even a thought. And that's a culture that simply, you know, liberalism won't, won't divorce, won't divorce it. its origins, its corruption, its ratchetness, if you will. So... That's what I saw when I saw what was going on. Because at first I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, what kind of black, no one, no, especially, I mean, black women, period. But Memphis females, what kind of black female is dealing with what the community, it ain't, so I'm not calling him a square. The community is calling him a square ass cornball ass nigga. And with that said, I'm just wondering, you know, who's screwing this dude? Or who is he screwing? And like I said, they showed a picture of who it actually was. And apparently from the picture that I got, apparently it was a bust down, a bust down bottom shelf Becky. Like, in no sense of the word or the imagination attract a basic ass Becky and to think that this dude lost his life over that and don't get it twisted don't get it twisted it, it doesn't take it doesn't take no it don't take no teenage prom queen To have certain men, especially this Memphian, to start war, to basically start World War Three on your ass. You would be amazed at how many of the of some of the toothless, stank breath, saggy titty having ass. man face but just happen to have a big butt but mannish face having ass females that these niggas will go hood buggers if you will that these uh that these thugs or I mean Memphians as a whole police officer or goon will kill your ass over and you know going throughout the city dealing with the city because um, I used to, uh, before I left, knowing that I couldn't find work and knowing that it was a waste of time anyway, you know, I just did temp jobs because, you know, that's where the money was. So that's what I did. 
And I'll be the first one to tell you that um, not all not all of them hood booger females are monster. Some of them, some of them, some of them um, White Haven broads, some of them South Memphis broads, shit. Low key, I mean, not even low key, just, I mean, just straight up finding a motherfucker. You'd be ama you would be amazed, you know, going through the hoods of the Haven in South Memphis, how how fine some of them broads can get. And how many of them was actually giving a nigga choosing signals? Cause I was I was on the nerd shit. I was on the Steve Urkel shit. I would go to uh like when I was working at the Nike factory. I was doing the same thing that, you know, I'm infamous for doing, going up in there and, you know, reading my books on my break. And do you really think that those books prevented me from gaining the stereotype that all black men have in a city like Memphis? Of course not. That's why I call... That's one of the reasons why I call um, the community out on its bullshit. That, you know, I guess if you win the genetic lottery, not that it did a nigga like me any kind of justice winning the genetic lottery. But, you know, it, it, I mean, my whole point is that, you know, based off the life that I live and the experiences that I face, you don't have to be a goon to attract one of these goofy broads. And even if you are a so-called lame, it's not going to change the fact that the world basically perceives you in the same light that they perceive a real Pookie and Ray Ray. This may sound like I'm going on a tangent, but, you know, and I guess this video isn't so much to rant about what happened to Tyree Nichols or, oh, police brutality, all this and that, because, I'm, like I said, I'm looking at Memphis as a whole. And, you know, this beating, I, I, I didn't even watch the beating, because, or not the entirety of it anyway, because I, I know it was brutal, I know it was savage. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, it's practically, it, at this point, it's practically a fucking snuff film. It's a snuff film is what it is. That exhibits the rage that... that a lot of these simp ass power simp ass Memphians incur when somebody's dealing with a girl even the bottom shelf yeah that can happen to you even when you dealing with a bottom shelf so with that said how much more would have happened to me if I did choose to uh, deal with a girl who's actually finding a motherfucker Finer than a motherfucker. Tall, light skinned, perfect teeth, tig old bitties. Or a light, bright, damn near white, basically. Because she was pretty much, she was half white. Tig old bitties, big old booty. Married to a Marine. And there were others, not not nearly as fine as she was. Yeah, that, that reminds me. There was this. Uh, there was also this. Uh, she worked at the. Uh, she worked at the wreck too. I was in the wreck a lot. You know, I've I've been the gym rat for quite some time, which is exactly why I'm so disappointed that you know after all these years, I still haven't managed to break my plateau. I feel like I should at least be having two plates on there. And I know how to do it. I just got to eat a lot. But the problem is I don't want to do that. Because last time I did that shit, I got real strong. But I got real fat. 
I ain't trying to put on weight like that. I'm trying to gain, I'm trying to do it right. You know, do as much lean muscle as I can. But before I left Memphis, um, there was this, there was, and she was dark skinned too, and she was bra, she was so fine. She was so, there was this tiny waist, and I think her name was London. I think that was her name. She, yeah, she was dark skinned, like tiny little thing too, but apparently she was from Arkansas, and bra, and she was giving, she was giving a nigga, well, I can't say confirmable choosing signals, but she was definitely looking at a nigga. She definitely had her eyes on a nigga. But the thing is, <laughs> she see, she liked them swole Mandingo ass niggas. <laughs> she liked them swole Mandingo ass niggas. And it was some swole motherfuckers, motherfuckers working in there. Like I said, got three plates on there. So, you know, you look at that and you're like, okay, well, you clearly used to dealing with these old football ass niggas. And at the time, I was like 29 at the time. But, you know, I look young for my age. So I probably did look like, you know, compared in their eyes, I probably look like a regular old shit. They, to them, see, I age uh, very slow. People still think I look like. You know, I'm in my 20s when the truth is I'm a, I'm knocking on 40. Motherfuckers be accusing me of looking like I'm 24. When, like I said, I'm, I'm on the verge of, I'm 37. So, you know, just imagine what I look like at 29. So to them, they probably did think I was probably like, shit, like probably like early 20s to them. Even though I was, you know, years older, much older, probably at least like 10, especially with the girl, like 10 years older than her. But yeah, I, I could tell, I could tell she was, she was low key choosing. And she was, bro, she was fine than a motherfucker. Tiny ass. Like, teeny tiny, but had a little booty poked out. And, bruh. So, you know, I, I just juxtapose all the times that I could have done it. I could have clapped them cheeks. Whereas, there, like I said, there were these, uh, like I said, there were these twin flames by which I was actually rooting for that. And these were females that I wasn't even all that sexually into like that. But I was trying to do right by them. And it just never, it it never popped off. And I'm just like, what the fuck? You know, not to mention the, uh, not to mention the girl that, you know, uh, you know, I fell head over heels and, you know, with, and next thing I know, I'm always... Whenever I saw around, it was always with one dude, then it was another dude, then it was another dude. Again, that I submit like that could have easily happened to me. And it it just goes to show that in a place like Memphis, ain't no ain't nobody safe. You ain't safe. Ain't nobody safe. Just like what we saw with this um this police officer who got shot at, I mean, at White Station Public Library in the pinnacle, in the pinnacle of East Memphis or the robbery that happened at that Hilton in East Memphis. Not South Memphis, not North Memphis, not at the library over uh, by my grandma's house where I used to live before I left Memphis. You would think some goon shit would have popped off there. But it's happening. It's happening at Oak Court. It's going down at Oak Court. It's going down at the University of Memphis. Where um, Eliza Fletcher got snatched. Because that was right over by, uh, by uh, Southern and Patterson. That used to be, that used to be over... Um, by the campus where I used to, uh, there were, there were some dorms, and I only did it for one semester, because them dorms were expensive than the motherfucker, but my first semester at the University of Memphis, there was this, um, 
there were these dorms called Southern. I think it was called Southern Campus. It's been a while. And it was one of the very few all-male um, dormitories. And I used to live there. That's that's exactly where it happened. I know exactly where it was that Eliza Fletcher got captured, got kidnapped, and, of course, murdered. Right across the street from there, across from the train tracks over by that... Um, that Elma so and so field house where I used where I used to do um, I used to run track. Well, I didn't run track, but I I would run across that field house. And she, I like to think she ran the same routes that I ran, cause sometimes I'd run out of the city and I got I get catcalled and just heckled and harassed just for being out there jogging. I ain't bothering nobody. I didn't get up as early as she did. No, it'd be dead in the middle of the day when I'd get out there and run. But yeah, man, it's it's fucked up and it just goes to prove that ain't nobody safe in that crazy ass city. And just how easily that city can kill your ass. Being at the wrong place at the wrong time fucking with the wrong people see I know I know I'm not going to get my props despite all the evidence that I have to prove you know the, the fruit of my wisdom if you will and just how wise I was beyond my years and I'm finally starting to realize that how wise I was beyond my years and the best evidence of it is the fact that I'm I'm here talking to y'all to this day. Haven't survived, haven't survived an armed robbery, haven't survived a crazy ass city as a whole, haven't survived MPD. And all the times that I had my personal encounters with MPD, the, the times that I got pulled over and you know, uh Motherfucker, I, I never ran into no scorpion unit or nothing like that. Or, you know, they had, when the time that I was there, they had Blue Crush. And, you know, I never ran into any of those fuckers. But I've definitely had my run-ins with police. Trust me. In the times that I had to uh, talk, basically talk my way out of certain situations. Where they could have just easily just blown me away. Because I was basically doing something I didn't have no business doing. Right? So it, it just takes me back down memory lane. Especially when we're looking at, especially when I'm looking at parts of the city that you know because it, it would be one thing if this happened in south memphis or north memphis somewhere where you know i really don't hail from somewhere that i've probably been around because you know it takes me back to when young Dolph be making you know videos deep in the hood of south memphis and parts of south memphis that i probably ain't never even been to but south memphis is just deep like that and I actually, you know, a long time ago, I used to live in South Memphis. But when I was living there, we, it was actually an army base that was there. So, you know, it was fall you up, uh, fall my real, you know, true to the game Memphians out there. Y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all remember the defense depot way back in the day. Which is exactly around the area where, um, around Makita's Cookies, where Dolph was killed off of Airways and Ketchum. That's where we used to live. But like I said, we weren't we weren't in the hood. We were around the hood because we were in, we were on U.S. government property, living there when when my dad was active. So 
there, there's a, there's a lot to be learned from this, and I'm I'm trying to pro see what I'm trying to do with my channel is provide insight, provide y'all insight with what you can expect basically when you set foot in a town like Memphis. You need to keep your head on the swivel. Just being there, whether you're there to visit or live there, you damn sure need to keep your head on the swivel if you plan on living there. I don't know what would possess you to live in a place like that in the first place. I used to provide y'all with scriptures. I don't even bother doing that, but I used to provide y'all with scriptures in the Bible that says that Memphis will be laid to waste and bereft of inhabitants. I would tell y'all that because it was newfound information for me. And that's one of the reasons that got me up out of there when I started looking at scriptures that said, set your baggage for exile, O daughter dwelling in Egypt, for Memphis will be laid to waste and there'll be bereft of inhabitants. It said that there'll be, there'll be, you know, Memphis will have enemies and distresses on the daily. Now, some play, now some books, some interpretation said Noth, because I have the King James Version, it's a, it describes it as Noph, N-O-P-H. And surely enough, I looked down and Noph was an old school terminology for ancient, it said ancient Memphis. Because we know that Memphis, Tennessee gets its notion from Memphis, Egypt. And all the curses that came out of Memphis, Egypt, clearly were put on Memphis, Tennessee. Clearly. Clearly they were. Because again, when you look at all the Egyptology of that city, when you look at all the, uh, the goddamn Freemason lodges that city has, all the fraternities, all the, like I said, all the, uh, the Scottish rites, the Scottish rite temples they got down there, And you you have that spiritual plane of understanding when you when you have the understanding of all that witchcraft that goes on down there. All them broads that be practicing the craft. You 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 see how you see the how a city like Memphis operates or really malfunctions the way that it does. <sighs> so yeah man um my my condolences my sincere my utmost and mo my most sincere condolences goes out to Tyree Nichols' family between Memphis you know the ones in Memphis and Sacramento I I deeply apologize that y'all having to suffer and go through what y'all have to go through right now. I, I apologize on behalf of these crazy ass Memphis folk and the crazy ass MPD and that pe worthless piece of shit CJ Davis. I apologize for those worthless pieces of shit. Those jealous ass covetous ass sacks of dog shit who created that scorpion unit because from the inf from the sources that I gathered apparently this scorpion unit like I said was just going around just fucking with random people long before they caught up to a man like Tyree Nichols but they had never they had never gone off the deep end like this before but even prior to they were fucking with people there was a dude who was just going to the store to get some pizza and these motherfuckers was drawing guns on them, talking about, get out the car, I'm going to blow your MF and brains out. You know, shit like that. Pulling, gun, pulling guns on unarmed citizens and people going to internal affairs and doing nothing about it. Internal affairs, internal affairs doing nothing about it. This is how this city kills your ass. Because, and I talked about this, I talked about how 
you know, internal affairs and, you know, people at the higher ups of Memphis will take the bullshit of people who are supposed to be in positions of authority and power and they sweep it under the rug. They sweep it under the rug. That's why I, that's why I low key feel like this needs to happen because it's the 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 society that society is tearing itself apart. But hey, whosoever so in corruption will reap corruption, right? And you know, so it's it's something it's part of it's part of a vetting process by which Memphis is being brought down by its own hand. And the very people who who terrorize that city and like I said make it the horrible place that it is, you know, they're basically cannibalizing themselves, which is exactly why I would tell you, I would beseech you. This is coming from somebody who had to survive that fucking place. Don't, don't even, don't, don't even consider making Memphis your home. Don't fall for the temptation of the lower cost of living. Because you will, you, trust me, you will regret it. You will regret it. You're not positive enough. You're not, I don't care how extroverted you think you are I don't care how spiritual you think you are I don't care how you know like we used to say in church uh, saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost you think you are that city will kill you that city there was a pastor not too long ago that got killed a female pastor and the crazy thing is one of the perpetrators was Hispanic that's crazy to me because usually, usually it's the sun man who's doing all that gooning and all that shooting and killing. But apparently it was a sun man and uh, it was a Latino. Elderly woman too. It's crazy. I don't care how much positive energy you think you have. I don't care how much money you think you have. Eliza Fletcher was an heiress to a billionaire fortune. Look what happened to her. Murdered by a savage, by this uh this Anthony Cleota Davis. And he had been let out on several occasions. Again, sweeping his past crimes under the rug because he was apparently a known rapist. That was that was his that was his MO. That's what he did. And you know, one fateful one fateful morning, Eliza Fletcher's out there doing her routine and the savage showed up because the thing about it is even though the University of Memphis is situated in East Memphis per se it's very close to South Memphis it's very close to the subset of South Memphis known as Orange Mound and it's no doubt in my mind that's where that's where he he kidnapped her and took her out there and of course, you know, raped her and killed her. It also kind of takes me back to, uh, you know, the nature of this crazy ass city. I believe the dude's name was Jesse Lee Dotson. And see, this goes, this again goes back to late, I mean, to real Memphis history. This shit goes back to uh, 
you know, Jesse Lee Dotson, if y'all know y'all, again, if you know your Memphis history, you go back to the, uh, the Leicester Street murders. You know, so what, who Anthony Cleota Davis was and what he did reminds me of that nigga. Except he's like the rapist version of that nigga. So Jesse Lee Dotson, at least I think that's his name. You know, the dude, again, responsible for the Leicester Street murders of 2008. Was this dude who, who was like 33 at the time. But several years back, you know, back when he was like 19 or so, apparently like in the early 90s, he had been convicted of murder. Murder. He killed somebody at like 18, 19 years old. And they had his ass in jail. See, the thing is, in Memphis, you, you could be convicted of murder and shit with good behavior. You can get out in about good 13, 14, 15 years. They'll let your ass out. Because that's exactly what this dude did. He was like 18, 19 years old. He fucked around and murked somebody. And they let his ass out. And he was like at his, um. He was either at his uh, sister's house or his cousin's house. And this crazy ass nigga killed several of them. He killed. I believe he killed either his sister or his cousin. And he killed some of her children too. With a fucking knife. He shot some of them and some of them he stabbed. And it's it's real fucked up because um you know I'm I'm kind of a comedian somewhat you know and I I have my own I have my own <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing about this y'all 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 again y'all gonna have to forgive me this is a pretty tasteless channel but uh I have my own plethora of fucked up jokes and you know Jesse Lee Dotson basically gave me the idea of what I call the didn't it feel good jokes yeah I, I call them didn't it feel good jokes so whenever something fucked up happens basically the premise of the didn't it feel good joke is you basically you know you um And I'll, I'll explain in a minute where you basically, the whole idea is to make a rhyme, you know, to make a rhyme out of a crime, <laughs> if you will. And it's, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. And the very first didn't feel good joke comes from this case where, because he was basically in court doing what most Memphians do when they're brought to justice and they have to, they have to account they have to atone, if you will, for their crimes. And they be up in there splaining and bullshitting. And this nigga was up here talking about, man, they was going to kill me. They was going to kill me if I didn't tell them what they were, what they were, like, just, I mean, just some bullshit. Something completely divergent from the fact, completely divergent from the fact that this nigga then killed his own sister and some of her kids. Like, one of the kids had, um, he had jammed the knife, like, all up in his skull. Now, he managed to survive, you know, glory to the most high. He survived, but, you know, they said by when the paramedics got there, he had a knife stuck in his head. So, he was basically up in there explaining and bullshitting, and the first didn't it feel good joke, and I'm sharing, like, I'm sharing gold with y'all. Like, I should kill y'all for, like, because, you know, it's one of those things, like, if I told you I'd have to kill you. But the premise of my didn't it feel good jokes comes from this dude, and it basically starts off with him basically being in the court 
Like, I could see him saying to uh, whomever, you know, didn't it feel good? Didn't it feel good? When I cut you and gut you just the way I should, stab your sister in the chest just the way that I could, and had sex with your mama just the way that I would. <laughs> Uh, and so for the past 15 years right because I was 22 when I saw that I was 22 when I first invented my first fucked up I me mean, utterly fucked up didn't it feel good joke and I don't really have a name for them so I just call them didn't it feel good jokes and I've, I've made a plethora of just fucked up didn't it feel good jokes and another one, you know, I can't, I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to go down the list, but, you know, for future references, I, you probably will find me on here, you know, making didn't it feel good jokes when something fucked up happens or something. And, you know, obviously, it ain't targeted towards every single fucked up thing that happened. Obviously, I haven't made the didn't it feel good joke for Young Dolphin or, you know, yeah. So, you know, I, I got sense with it. And no, I didn't make a didn't it feel good joke for uh, Tyree Nichols either, because that's that's all fucked up, all fucked up, or or Eliza Fletcher, because that's all fucked up. You don't do that. That shit ain't funny. But have I made didn't it feel good jokes for several people in several fucked up situations? Hell yeah. And depending on how goof, the level of goofiness of the scenario will depend will determine the outcome of the didn't it feel good joke. So, um, years later, there was this incident, I believe it was in St. Louis, I think, where, and I know I'm running on a tangent, I know I am, but I'll, I'll get back on, I, I, I kind of want to low-key, <laughs> I kind of want to low-key advertise my fucked up didn't it feel good jokes, but, you know, I'm just, I just say all that to say that it came from that town, it came from that craziest town called Memphis, and, you know, how, you know, the Anthony Cleota Davis uh, incident with Eliza Fletcher reminded me so so much of what happened with um, because he has a history he has a history of going around just raping random females and they and they had him in the system and they let him go and he went around and did the same thing again this time he killed a he killed a bitch just like Jesse Lee Dotson he fucked around and killed somebody he did his time in jail. He did like 14 years in jail. And as soon as they let him go, he fuck around and go out here and kill somebody. Like just some psychopath type shit. But, uh. So I remember, um. Back to this didn't feel good joke. I think it was. It was somewhere like, I want to say somewhere in the Midwest, like either Minnesota or um, St. Louis, where there was this stupid, irresponsible ass mother <laughs> who had an infant son at the zoo. And, you know, she had him right over this pit full of African wild dogs who are basically, to me, are just a bunch of miniature hyenas. And she had him standing right above the uh, 